Have you ever been sick or had strep throat? Then you've probably had some sort of antibiotic. Antibiotics were discovered by accident through Alexander Fleming. He saw colonies of bacteria growing in a culture plate and unintentionally mold started growing in a plate starting and started messing with the colonies. A decade later, Ernest Chain and Howard Florey and others isolated the ingredient responsible, penicillin, and showed that it was highly effect effective against many serious bacterial infections which was experimented with. Soon after they were sold to public, it cured strep throat and UTI. Strep throat was a pandemic from children and infections. They were getting bad, but with antibiotics, it kept patients alive for much longer and helped stop and or prevent infection. Antibiotics are a cure and a necessary item for the medical industry, and if it were to stop working, it would send the world into multiple pandemics all over again. When antibiotics were originally made, they prescribed it to everyone for everything. For example, the short video talks about how antibiotics shouldn't be used for a cold and flu. The American College of Physicians, together with the CDC, want to cut down on prescribing antibiotics for common respiratory infections. They say about 50% of antibiotic prescriptions may be unnecessary. But soon it real they realized that it doesn't work for everything and found antibiotics don't work on viruses. It only works on bacteria, so it's only good for infection and very certain illnesses. The smallest infection would make them prescribe extra antibiotics to make sure it doesn't get worse. This was common until antibiotics stopped working as well the same people and even some people who had never been on antibiotics. This is called antibacterial resistance. It is getting worse with every year. They've known about it for a few decades, but it will continue to make bacteria stronger. The worst part is that only one bacteria needs to get resistant because bacteria small swaps small amounts of DNA. So if it just one gets the resistance, then it can spread like wildfire. Now we don't take them as much, but the bacteria will continue to get stronger and we will make our antibiotics stronger, which will then intensify the resistance over time. Now people don't take them as much, but the bacteria will continue to get stronger and we will make our antibiotics more effective over the next few decades and eventually the prices will go up for antibiotics and making them stronger will cost more. If the resistance gets too strong, it will potentially grow, outgrow our technology and if that happens, pandemics will happen all over again and this time we won't have a cure. It's wrong to take antibiotics. No, they're wonderful pills, but they won't always make you better. So take as much as your doctor prescribes to you. Doctors know how much to give you and it will slow it down enough to prevent antibiotic resistance as long as people do it as their doctor says. For example, this video shows why you shouldn't take antibiotics without a doctor's prescription. Headlines so of the day. We're going to start off with a new study on antibiotics. It's uh, actually finding that people actually get them without going to a doctor. What's going on here? Though? Shocker, right? Yeah. Shocker. <laughs> well, basically, what we found is that people are getting antibiotics and they are getting the medicines from their friends and the doctors are actually not prescribing them. They're getting them for diseases that are not infections. So we got to think about how this is happening. So the Centers for Medicaid uh, and Medicare actually did a study and the study uh, actually looked at 45 percent of antibiotic prescriptions written over an extended period of time, a 10, 10 year period of time. And of that group, there were millions, I mean 300 million prescriptions written and only 17% were actually done appropriately, okay? And that, that sounds ridiculous. And they were at about 82 million prescriptions. 82 million were written inappropriately. 82 that's million. Me. And that's with no infection related illness at all. And 25% of those had no record of a doctor visit in any way, shape, or form. One way we can find new ways to treat antibacterial infections is by developing new antibiotics. However, this is difficult because bacteria are constantly evolving and become resistant to new antibiotics. Another way to fight antibiotics resistance is by finding alternative treatments such as probiotics or phage therapy, which uses viruses to kill bacteria. In 1928, a Scottish scientist named Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, a powerful medicine that changed how we treat bacterial infections and saved many lives. While studying bacteria at St. Mary's Hospital in London, he accidentally left some petri dishes on his bench and later found that mold had started growing on them. 
He noticed that the mold was killing the bacteria and he isolated the thing responsible. Its name was penicillin, and this was the first antibiotic ever discovered. I think this must be one of the most exciting and important places in the history of the last century. If you think of the number of lives saved by penicillin, I always feel when I come in that Alexander Fleming is about to come back in. He's about to pick up a petri dish he left before he went off on holiday and finds that it has become contaminated by a mould. That mould has produced something that has killed off the bacteria in the dish. This was how he discovered penicillin. As more antibiotics were discovered, bacteria continued to become resistant to them. Sometimes people would not finish their entire course of antibiotics or doctors would prescribe antibiotics for illnesses caused by viruses, which antibiotics cannot cure. In addition, farmers used antibiotics to keep animals healthy, but this also helped bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. Best quality care. Antibiotics are an essential tool for treating potentially serious bacterial infections in farm animals. However, the emergence of antibiotic resistance poses a major threat for animals, people and the environment. Misuse of antibiotics can reduce their effectiveness, meaning resistance to these important medicines can build up. Through extensive research, with data collected from over 4,500 farms, we're investigating antibiotic use across Wales. We carry out environmental sampling on farms to explore and evaluate the spread of antibiotic resistance. We provide support for vets to help them set high standards when prescribing antibiotics for farm animals and horses to prevent unnecessary use. Using novel technology and precision agriculture, we are helping farmers reduce the need to use antibiotics. During World War II, penicillin was used to treat infections in soldiers. This was very successful. However, by the 1940s, some bacteria had become resistant to penicillin. This was because people were using the drug too much and bacteria could change quickly to protect oneself. Nowadays, antibiotic resistance is a big problem. Bacteria are becoming resistant to many antibiotics, which is making it harder to treat infections. This can make people stay in the hospital for longer, cost more money for treatment, and even some cases can cause death. In total conclusion, antibiotic resistance is a big problem that was caused by using antibiotics too much or in the wrong way. It can be dangerous for, to our health, however, if we use antibiotics carefully, we can find new treatments and alternative therapies to help stop the spread of antibiotic resistance bacteria to keep ourselves healthy.